Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel Causes and that Reacts where I learn all things para with your hope and I just share my Slovak Central European point of view and today's video it's going to be very interesting I believe. So what if I told you that during the darkest time of Polish history uh, there was a Hindu uh, Rajput king that helped to save lots of uh, hungry lost children, Polish children and i believe this is a testament to a hindu community and shows their compassion and spirit and i believe that's a story that is to be heard and understood by everyone and perhaps speaks to a testament of a hindu culture so watch it share it and let me know what you think please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification thank you so much for your support all right, let's get into it. In 1939, during the beginning of the Second World War, Poland was attacked by Germany and the Soviet Union. Helpless Polish citizens, including many women and children, were displaced and tried to escape. Those that could not escape faced atrocities, war crimes, forced labor and imprisonments. It was during this time when an Indian Maharaja from Gujarat showed his generosity by saving almost 1,000 Polish children who had successfully escaped the brutality of the war in their own homeland. But wait a minute. Most Poles today have never heard about it. Why? Much of World War II centered on Poland. A significant part of our school textbooks cover the history of World War II. But for some strange reasons, this particular incident of the Indian Maharaja finds no mention. This, by the way, is, is war, so it's like the old town. I decided to meet with a principal of a Polish government-run school who herself has pursued history as a subject during her higher education in Poland. Nie pierwszy raz słyszę tę historię. Jestem zaskoczona, że w ogóle w Polsce nie mówi się o tym. To było rzeczywiście wielkie poświęcenie, wspaniałe w ogóle wydarzenie i jestem zaskoczona. Nigdy w życiu tutaj w Polsce o tym nie słyszałam. Powinno się właśnie o takich rzeczach mówić. Mówi się o wielu osobach, które ratowały życie w czasie II wojny światowej. Natomiast tą historię słyszę pierwszy raz. Czy ta historia jest w programie nauczania w Polsce? Nie, tej historii nie ma. I w ogóle zastanawiam się dlaczego, bo to powinno być w podręczniku, ewentualnie powinno się poinformować nawet nas, nauczycieli o tym, żebyśmy mogli to propagować, rozpowszechniać taką piękną historię. Mr. Bandari is a former ambassador of India to United Arab Emirates and to Poland. Way back, I mean this is Second World War, when the children from Siberia, foreign children, uh, they were rescued and they were uh, distributed to any country who was willing to take them. And uh, I, I learned it from recorded uh, books uh, that a shipload of Polish children were, uh, you know, brought to India, but there was no one who was offering to take them. And the Maharaja of Jamnagar uh, offered to host these children. And therefore, thereafter, I mean, these few thousand children, actually, he provided uh, all facilities and uh, they lived for a few years. They were provided schools, health, everything. So much so that I believe when time came to return, these children didn't want to go back because they didn't know. Many of them had lost their parents. And so therefore, when I was ambassador in Poland between 2007 and 2009, I got to meet some of them. Oh. And especially when our president, uh, Mrs. Pratibha Patel, when she was visiting Poland on the state visit, I made sure that a uh, delegation of these children met. Uh, so now there are not many uh, surviving because uh, during my time, they were telling me about 300 of them are still alive, but spread all over the world. Because when they went back, they did not necessarily settle down in Poland. They went to different countries, mm. and uh, but they were meeting every year. But now these meetings have become also very, uh, you know, not so frequent, uh, not annual meetings because not many are surviving anymore. I'm not sure if hundred are alive, 
but it is a very heart uh, you know moving uh, story of the children how this maharaja really you know offered and they became so close to each other Evelina is a flight attendant who has traveled significantly in different parts of the world. She has the opportunity to meet and interact with many passengers on a daily basis. She has spent a lot of time in India exploring the country's various areas. However, she had never heard about this particular connection between India and Poland. Niestety nie znam żadnego Polaka, który usłyszałby wcześniej o historii Maharadży. Dużo podróżuję, byłam również w Indiach, znam Polaków, którzy byli w Indiach a żaden z nich nie słyszał wcześniej o tej historii. Uważam, że jest to na tyle ważny element polskiej historii, że dzieci powinny się uczyć tego w szkołach. Polacy powinni się o tym dowiedzieć. Więc ja jako Polka byłabym szczęśliwa, jeżeli Karolina, ty byś jako również Polka tą wiedzę przekazała naszym rodakom, ponieważ to niesie za sobą wielką inspirację dla nas jak ważne jest pomaganie innym ludziom, ponieważ w dzisiejszych czasach również istnieje wiele osób, które tej pomocy potrzebują. Więc dla nas jest to ogromna lekcja. So, what can be done? Well, on numerous occasions I have been asked to produce a documentary film on this subject in Polish. This is something that I haven't ruled out. But don't you think that in the Polish school textbooks and in the history-related syllabuses of our universities, the generous Indian Maharaja of Mavanagar, Sri Digvijay Sinji Ranjit Sinji Jadeja, also deserves a place? So what do you guys think? I think it's it's a really moving and touching story. Literally, I was about to cry. I'm like, no, you're on camera, please don't cry. Um, very emotional. It's what what I'll add to that is the fact that we really do not know here everything. Obviously, I, I on one hand, if we're for the sake of the argument, no one can know everything. But um, you know, it was through this channel that I and I have a degree in history, might I say. I've never heard of Indians being a part of the Second World War, like serving in the army. That's not thought. I actually discussed it with my family member and she's a teacher. And that was first for her as well. So certain things are omitted from the history and it's sad. I think that it definitely does deserve a place in Polish history because when it comes to the Second World War, the stories that we have is like a Schindler's List. Like there were people that were saving uh, like Jews and helping them out of the concentration camps uh, and and they have been glorified and that has been highlighted it's just sometimes I wonder how you know the history is really manipulated and how we really do not know and why this is suppressed maybe it's suppressed on purpose knowing people I feel like it's suppressed or not even suppressed but it's omitted simply because I feel like India is just in, in our head so far away, you know, and we're part of, let's say, the Western civilization. So we just teach people the facts that are relating to the Western world where, you know, the Asian world is it's not really that discussed, to be honest, here. Uh, I think it's just because, at least when I was growing up, uh, it was right after the fall of communism and everything was communistic you guys what well, you really need to like keep on defending it but um, you have to realize that the during the times of um of let's say 1971 and things that happened um that was like a deep communism here and the only information you could have is information from the party so even though the communism is no longer here, like for example, when Slovakia was formed, you had you we were still being taught from like the communistic books, and it was communistic point of view. Now you, I, I know you love your Russians and stuff, and I understand why you do. Um, however, these were the people that were writing this history and educating us. So. 
either they were purposefully omitting it or they just didn't believe that was a relevant thing to mention. Pick one. And yeah, we don't know about these things and that has never met our books. Um, I, I sometimes really don't even try to see that there is some sort of an agenda behind that. I just think it just comes down to the fact that Honestly, when I was studying, everything was from like, yeah, there were some books in the library. It was the time where internet was like up and coming, you know, like I was at a high school when we had like the first printers. Um, what, what were they called? They were not the laser ones, but they were like the ones that were, or they're called like needle ones. They're just you know, I remember I was printing a DiCaprio picture of K. Winslet like Titanic. And that was that was just like what was happening uh, in Slovakia. And at a time we, you know, like you, you build a new country, your new post-communist country. The only source of knowledge is that that has been there for a while. You know, you cannot just now build a country and suddenly in the next 10 years redo your history all over because what you first need to do and what people, for example, in Slovakia had to do was to ensure, and I just actually really recently came across a um, video of our first prime minister and the shocks that I have heard, like how he had to build a country was insane. So the, the priorities was if Slovakia could even exist. Um, because there was like the separation between, between Czechoslovakia, you know, we split. And so when you have a time where you have no money as a country, no nothing, no resources, your first thing is not going to be, um, you know, like rewriting history. So I think that the, these things are have been either purposefully or just simply didn't find them relevant. Communists didn't do that. And then we've continued for the next decades without really reworking the history stuff. But it looks like it's not even done today. So um, it's a tricky one, but it's a, it's a very interesting and touching story and testament to, I believe, Hindu values. Um, which I believe you guys tell me that, you know, the, in the West you're prosecuted for, which is very, very sad, um, because I think that the fundamental Indian Hindu philosophy is 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 very, I, I believe, peace loving. You know, very collective, very base of spirituality, and you know, the world is one family. We're all together. We're all one. We're all connected um yeah if you like this video please do share a like um subscribe to this channel set out the notifications so you actually get notified when the next video is up and i'd love to know your thoughts on this and and with that being said thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace and love bye, -bye.